Hi, it's Grammy from Grammy and Grandpa Read, and today I have a book for you called Charlie the Tramp, and it's written by Russell Hoban, and the pictures are done by Lillian Hoban. And this is one of Grandpa's books from when he was in third grade. Isn't that cool? All right. Well, well, said Grandfather Beaver. One day when we came to visit, Charlie is getting to be a big boy. Yes, he is, said Father. He is coming right along. Grandfather smiled at Charlie and took a quarter out of his vest pocket. What are you going to be when you grow up, Charlie? Asked Grandfather. <laughs> Whoops. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to be a tramp, said Charlie. A tramp, said Mother. A tramp, said Father. A tramp, said Grandfather. And he put the quarter back in his vest pocket. <laughs> Yes, said Charlie, I'm going to be a tramp. I'm surprised to hear that, said Father. Your grandfather has been doing beaver work for many years, and I too am a beaver, but you want to be a tramp? That's how it is nowadays, said Grandfather, shaking his head. When I was young, children didn't want to be tramps. <laughs> Hmm. I don't think Charlie really wants to be a tramp, said Mother. Yes, I do, says Charlie. Tramps don't have to learn how to chop down trees and how to roll logs or how to build dams. Tramps don't have to practice swimming and diving and holding their breath underwater. Nobody looks to see if their teeth are sharp. Nobody looks to see if their fur is oiled. Tramps carry sticks with their uh, with little bundles tied to them and they sleep in a field when the weather is nice and when it rains they sleep in a barn. Tramps just tramp around and have a good time and when they want something to eat they do little jobs or that anybody for anybody that wants little jobs done. He's got it all figured out. <laughs> I have lots of little jobs for you to do, said Father. You can help me cut saplings for our winter food, and you can help me dig extra tunnels for our lodge. And of course, the dams always need repairs. That's not little jobs, said Charlie. That's hard work. When I was young, said Grandfather, children did hard work. Nowadays, all they want to do is have is do little jobs. <laughs> Well, said Father, if Charlie wants to be a tramp, then I think he should be a tramp. I think he should. we should not stand in his way. The weather is nice and warm now, said, said Charlie. May I start sleeping in the fields? All right, said Mother. Charlie tied up some fig newtons with some good and plenties in his handkerchief then he tied the handkerchief to a stick and he was ready to go. Now it's time for me to be on the road and away, said Charlie. Goodbye, Mr. Tramp, said Father and Grandfather. Goodbye, Mr. Tramp, said Mother. Come home in time for breakfast and don't forget to brush your teeth tonight. Goodbye, said Charlie. Tramps don't brush their teeth. What? He got into a little boat and rowed across the pond and trampled off down the road while mother and father and grandfather waved to him. Now that I think of it, said grandfather, I wanted to be a tramp when I was little, just like Charlie. So did I, said father. That is how, how men are, said, said mother. <laughs> they all want to be tramps. <laughs> Charlie tramped down the road, kicking a stone and whistling a tramping song as he went. He looked at the blue hills far away and he listened to cowbells tinkling in the distant meadows. Sometimes he stopped to throw a stone at telephone poles and sometimes he sat underneath a tree and watched the cat clouds roll by. Charlie kept tramping until it was almost sundown and then he picked up picked a field to sleep in. He picked a field where the daisies grew and the grass and the clover smelled sweet. Charlie untied his little bundle and took out some Fig Newtons and some Good and Plenties, and he ate them while the stars came out. Being a tramp is nice, said Charlie to himself, and he went to sleep. 
Mother was watching for him in the window the next morning um, when he rode across the pond. Here comes Charlie, she said to father with his fur between his, uh, with his fur every which way and a bundle of daisies on his stick. Good morning, lady, said Charlie <laughs> when mother opened the door and he gave her the daisies. Do you have a little job I can do for my breakfast, he said. You can bail out the big rowboat, said father. That will be nice for a little job for you. All right, said Charlie, and then I will eat my breakfast on the back steps because that's how we tramps do it. So Charlie bailed out the rowboat and while he was eating his breakfast on the back step, father came and sat down beside him. How have you been, how is it, how do you like being a tramp, he said. I like it fine, said Charlie. It's a lot easier than being a beaver. How did you sleep last night, said father. Fine, said Charlie, but something kept waking me up. Was it something scary, said father. No, said Charlie, it was something nice, but I don't know what it was. I will have to listen for it again tonight. When Charlie rode across the pond and went off down the road, whistling his tramping song, he went and he went down the road. Charlie tramped all day and he listened to the birds singing and he smelled the flowers that grew by the side of the road. Sometimes he stopped to pick blueberries or blackberries. Sometimes he walked along the top rails of fences. At lunchtime and at dinner time, Charlie went home and did little jobs for his lunch and his dinner. He stacked winter saplings in the basement for his lunch and for his dinner, he helped his father fix a broken plank in the boat landing. After dinner, Charlie went back to the field where the clover and the daisies grew. Charlie ate his fig newtons and his good and plenties, and he listened for the sound that he had heard the night before. Charlie heard the frogs and the crickets singing in the quiet of the night. He heard something else. He heard a, a trickling, tickling kind of little song that had no words. The trickling, tickling song made Charlie want to hear it better, so he got up and went down to the trees where the sound was coming from. He saw a little stream that sang as it ran in the moonlight. He sat down and listened to the song, but the sound of the trickling kept tickling Charlie. He could not sit still. So he took off his clothes and dived into the stream and swam around inside the song of the water, the uh, inside the song, the water was singing. When Charlie climbed out and cut down a little tree that was growing on the bank, when he when the tree fell down, he rolled in, it into the water. Charlie kept a uh, Charlie cook, took a deep breath and swam to the bottom of the stream with a stick and stuck it in the mud so that it would not float away. Then he listened to the song of the water. He liked it better than he had before. So Charlie cut down some more trees and he began to make a little dam to keep all the water from trickling away. Charlie worked on the dam all night and by morning the stream had widened into a pond. Then the song of the water stopped tickling Charlie and he said, now I guess I can go back to sleep. So he brushed his teeth to keep them sharp and he oiled his fur to keep the water it waterproof and he went to sleep in an old hollow tree by his new pond. Charlie slept right through breakfast time and mother began to worry when she did not see him. I am surely sure Charlie is all right, said father, but I think we should go look for him anyhow. And he went down to the boat landing and slapped the water with his tail. Whack! Whack, answered grandfather with his tail, and he came over to see what the what was the matter. I never did think any good would come of letting the boy run off and be a tramp, said mother. That's how it is nowadays, said grandfather. Boys run off and no good comes of it. <laughs> so mother and father and grandfather went looking for Charlie, and after a while they came to a new pond, but they did not see Charlie sleeping in the hollow um, hollow tree right here. I don't remember seeing a pond here before, said grandfather. Neither do I, said father. It must be a new one. That's a pretty good pond, said grandfather. I wonder who made it. 
I don't know, said father. You think maybe Harry Beaver might have done it? No, said grandfather. Harry always makes a sloppy dam, and this one's not sloppy at all. What about old Zeb Beaver? He said, said father. Zeb always makes a good looking dam. No, grandfather, said grandfather. Zeb never makes a round pond like this one. Zeb always likes a long shaped pond. You're right, says father. He does. You know, said mother to father, this pond looks like the ponds you make. She's right, said grandfather, it does. That's funny, said father, it didn't, I didn't make it, I wonder who did. I did, said Charlie, waking up and coming out of the hollow tree. That's my pond. That's your pond, said father. That's my pond, said Charlie. I thought you were a tramp. Grandfather, tramps don't make ponds. Well, said Charlie, sometimes I like to tramp around and sometimes I like to make ponds. Any tramp that can make a pond like that is going to be some beaver one of these days, said father. That's how it is nowadays, said grandfather. You never know when a tramp will turn out to be a beaver. <laughs> and he took the quarter out of his vest pocket and gave it to Charlie. Thank you, said Charlie. Where's mother? But mother had ran back to the boat, rowed across the pond as fast as she could, and had flapjacks and maple syrup ready on the table when the men came home. Oh, that's cute. That's a cute story. I hope you liked it, and um, please subscribe to our channel.